What's up everyone? Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Tamara and today I really want to focus on the sensitivity and temper of borderline personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder. Which one of those is most prone to a hot temper and sensitivity? I looked inside my DSM-5. Do they even mention sensitivity or temper? I think the central focus of borderline personality disorder is emotion and displays of emotional outbursts. So number six says effective instability due to a marked reactivity of mood. So that insinuates it. It talks about irritability and anxiety. And then number eight says inappropriate intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. And it talks about frequent displays of temper, constant anger, recurrent physical fights. So it point blank does talk about temper. Now let's look at narcissistic personality disorder and see what the DSM-5 says about that. I felt like it was a bit of a stretch to find something that really talks about temper. The closest thing I got was number eight, is often envious of others or believes that others are envious of him or her. And number nine, shows arrogant, haughty behaviors or attitudes. I think both borderlines and narcissists are very sensitive to slights. With a borderline, you're gonna get huge reactions from something that isn't going to make sense to you. Like, oh, I forgot you don't like sugar in your tea. That could create a huge angry outburst. Sometimes it's so minute or it doesn't make sense. Sometimes it could be because it's time to leave. They're just looking for an explosive way to react to the fact that they don't wanna separate from you, that they are feeling that fear of abandonment. And I'm not speaking to you for two weeks. That's how strongly triggered they are to abandonment. But at the same time, slights, you can say the littlest thing and it gets them into a huge rage. Narcissists, they may not show that type of rage at the onset of a slight. You may not necessarily know that you have frustrated them. They do get upset though at other times when there's a quote unquote slight. It won't make any sense either. It's like you're trying to explain that no you were the one that was getting upset the other person wasn't and they're like no that other person was doing this or that to me and so you can see some explosions from them as well i think narcissist will get you back in deeds like or words so it may be an action that they take towards you or a point of humiliation Narcissists are very ugly and nasty and vicious. I would say vicious because they will do things. And usually, especially if it's a high functioning narcissist, there are some of them that don't show displays of quote unquote anger, even though they can be very rude and nasty. One of the reasons for that is because of their hidingness, their evilness, People tend to walk on eggshells around narcissists. Oh, let me kiss your butt. Oh, let me say the nicest thing to you. Oh, let me flatter you and tell you how wonderful you are because if I don't, you will come after me for seemingly no reason. Like, you might embarrass me in front of people. Sometimes if they're very attached to someone, they also don't want someone getting close to their person in a way. So they may be triggered into, let me humiliate my favorite person and make them look stupid or crazy to the people around them. And then when you're one on one with a narcissist, they're very kind, they're very nice. You have great conversations. They don't want other people to see your greatness. So they try to put you down and make you feel stupid so that you don't overshadow their limelight. Narcissists can be very biting, very vicious, very rude, very temperamental. Some of them 
do not act with a bite all the time. They can even seem quite tranquil and calm, and yet they're exploiting you, uh, taking advantage of people. You do my work for me because it's gonna benefit me. They can be temperamental as well and be nice nasty. You'll get a lot of that. With borderlines, you're gonna see more of just absolute emotional displays of anger. Because when I think of who's the most stable, usually the narcissist, I feel like they can be more quote unquote independent, even though some of them aren't, especially if there's a mixture of borderline in there, you're gonna see more neediness. But I think narcissists can stand on their own. They can be very independent to a certain degree. Now they do see people as extensions of themselves, but they can sort of make it in this world, I think, better than a borderline. Borderline, they are gonna need that favorite person to be okay. Borderlines are more sensitive to people their sensitivity lends them to be very compassionate and caring about their needs. If you're really upset, a borderline can be very loving and caring and sweet and gentle and helpful and hey, I'm all in. They have a deep capacity, which I've talked about in some of my other videos. So I think they are very sensitive. I think narcissists can also be sensitive, believe it or not, to a certain degree. Uh, they can show you they care by bringing you some water. Some of them do have the capacity to talk about feelings and emotions and things that you're going through and they can be okay. And yet they can be very intolerant of feelings as well. Some of the nice, nasty, more outwardly vicious ones tend to be able to sit and have a conversation about feelings if you are close to them, if they consider you a friend, they can do that for you. If you're not a friend, like they can't stand you for whatever reason, or you're seemingly too needy because there's a lot of narcissists that like strong people and independence. They don't like weakness. They're allergic to that. Your house just got flooded. Your house caught on fire. They don't give two shades. They want you to shut the blank up. It's, they think you are just a whiny brat. But if they're close to you, they can have some level of sensitivity. I feel like you will be more confused with a relationship with a borderline because you're not gonna know what the heck did I do? The narcissist, you can just look at them and say, they're nice, nasty, they're rude. They're gonna be stupid sometimes. <laughs> and that's just that. It feels horrible when they dig their claws into you or they come after you or they're envious of you and they're disrespectful and rude, but you can still get some level of space, I think, from them. A borderline is gonna be all over you and attached to you. The closer they get to you, the more freaked out they get about abandonment. And so you're gonna get more emotional, confusing outbursts that just send you into complete confusion. Why is this person ignoring me? Sometimes they can dissociate and they're sitting with you. But they have disappeared. And so you're like, why is this person not talking to me? Both are super toxic and difficult and painful to deal with. And I know we have to have compassion for them because both of them have a disorder. The problem with the compassion piece is all of the damage that they do. And that's why I promote in my videos, you better take care of your little children. Uh, you don't want to create a narcissist, especially if you have some narcissist genetic or borderline propensity in your genetic makeup, then you want to be especially careful with raising your little kids and bonding and all that stuff. So anyway, definitely check out my playlist. I have a ton 
of videos on borderlines and narcissists and I'm gonna give you information that the DSM-5 is just not gonna give you all the time. I'm a counselor, so I know what I'm talking about. I'll also put a link to my book, The Workplace Narcissist, which is on Amazon by Tamara Hunter Zion. It is a must read because I'm going to explain to you a specific type of narcissist. That narcissist could be in your romantic life, they could be in your friendship, they could be your parent. And so I'm gonna break all that down. You wanna be ready for it and you wanna have some strategies. So check it out and I'll see you my friends on the next video, bye.